Out of growing concerns about the deadly coronavirus officially hitting the U.S., here's what we know. A Washington state resident fell ill after returning from Wuhan, China, where the outbreak began. There are currently 64 known cases of the coronavirus in the United States after two new cases were identified just tonight, California and Oregon. And still the president is talking about 15 cases. And just tonight at a rally, he went a step further and called the coronavirus a hoax. This is their new hoax. Breaking news, the first death from coronavirus here in the United States. A man in his 50s dying from COVID-19 infection in Washington state. To unleash the full power of the federal government in this effort today, I am officially declaring a national emergency. The number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the U.S. now tops 83,000, more than have been recorded in China or Italy. More than 1,100 people here have died from the coronavirus. The 23rd of March, you said you knew this was going to be a pandemic. Can I tell you what? Well, I did know it. I did know it. All I have to do is look. So you knew All, it anybody knew it. Just, are you ready? How many cases were in the United States when I did my ban? How many people had died in the United States? So do you acknowledge that you didn't think Keep, you your, voice down, Keep your voice down, please. Keep your voice down. Right, and then I see the disinfectant where it knocks it out in a minute, one minute. And is there a way we can do something like that? Uh, by injection inside or or almost a cleaning because you see it gets on the lungs and it does a tremendous number of the lungs so it'd be interesting to check that so that you're gonna have to use medical doctors with but it sounds it sounds interesting to me why is this a global competition to you if every day americans are still losing their lives and we're still seeing more cases every day well they're losing their lives everywhere in the world and maybe that's a question you should ask China. Don't ask me, ask China that question, okay? When you ask them that question, you may get a very unusual answer. Yes, behind you, please. On May 25th, 2020, George Floyd, a 46-year-old black man, died after a white police officer holding his knee on Floyd's neck, pinned him to the pavement while he was in handcuffs. In the days that followed, public outrage grew over what some protesters and lawmakers said is another case of police brutality against a black man. The number of deaths here in the United States has just crossed 100,000. That is 100,000 men, women, children, mothers, fathers, sons, daughters, grandparents. 100,000 plus gone. As we remember uh, all those who have been lost, there are so many tough questions Americans should still be asking about what could have been done and what still needs to be done right now. We're going to begin at the White House, where President Trump spoke out for the first time from the Rose Garden, vowing to send U.S. troops into the streets of American cities if local authorities don't control the protests. Those remarks came just moments after the administration asked police to clear peaceful protesters from the park across the White House so the president could stage a photo op. It's a disease, without question, has more names than any disease in history. I can name Kung Flu. When you do testing to that extent, you're gonna find more people, you're gonna find more cases. So I said to my people, slow the testing down, please. The president finally agrees to be seen in public wearing a mask, and it came during a visit to the Walter Reed Military Hospital here in Washington earlier today. Meanwhile, spiking numbers are being seen across much of the country, especially in states that rushed to reopen. The daily coronavirus death toll has now surpassed 1,000 for the first time since May. And even though some areas are seeing infections level off, some hot spots are on the brink facing a shortage of ICU beds. 
I think it's under control. I'll tell you what. How? A thousand Americans are dying a day. They are dying. That's true. And you ha it is what it is. But that doesn't mean we aren't doing everything we can. It's under control as much as you can control it. This morning, the U.S. hitting another grim milestone, surpassing 5 million reported cases of COVID-19. Tonight, doctors in Nevada confirming the first known American to be reinfected with the coronavirus. The 25-year-old man first got sick in March, but recovered, even tested negative twice. But 48 days after the initial infection, his symptoms returned. He had to be hospitalized, this time with a different strain of the virus. The Trump administration is also facing new criticism after newly uncovered memos revealed the White House allegedly blocked a proposal from the Postal Service to send 650 million disposable masks to American households back in April. Take your hat off to the young because they have a hell of an immune system, but it affects virtually nobody. It's, a, it's an amazing thing. By the way, open your schools. Everybody open your schools. Tonight, the United States has reached yet another devastating and unthinkable moment in a pandemic that continues to change our country and our way of life. As we come on the air tonight, more than 200,000 people in the U.S. have now been killed by the virus. 200,000 lives lost, 200,000 stories left unfinished. And tonight, there's some breaking news that the crisis may once again be getting worse. One of the leading models used by the White House now projects that by the end of the year, the death toll nationwide may nearly double to 378,000. President Trump has refused for years to release his tax returns, and tonight he's facing new scrutiny over his finances while in office. The New York Times obtaining over two decades of tax return data for President Trump and his business organization, showing he paid just $750 in federal income taxes in 2016 and $750 more his first year in the White House. This stunning news, the President of the United States now confirming to the world that he and the First Lady of the, of the United States have both tested positive for the coronavirus and they will quarantine. The President tweeting out just moments ago here in the United States, 1254 a.m., said tonight at FLOTUS and I, uh, and I tested positive for COVID-19, we will begin our quarantine and recovery process immediately. We will get through this together. I just left Walter Reed Medical Center, and it's really something very special. The doctors, the nurses, the first responders, and I learned so much about coronavirus. And one thing that's for certain, don't let it dominate you. Don't be afraid of it. You're going to beat it. We have the best medical equipment. We have the best medicines, all developed recently. And you're going to beat it. I went. I didn't feel so good. And two days ago, I could have left two days ago. Two days ago, I felt great, like better than I have in a long time. I said just recently, better than 20 years ago. Don't let it dominate. Don't let it take over your lives. Don't let that happen.